Like I said, I'm gonna do something in this video that I've never seen anywhere else. I have not been able to find a video of anyone doing this on YouTube and I haven't been able to find an article. Maybe it's because it's a bad idea, I don't know. I'll find out. Previously on 3 Day IPA. So far I've brewed two beers back to back in the same kettle. We'll let this uh, do its thing. The first beer was fermented using Hornendal and Sigmund's Voss yeast straight out of the packaging. This crazy Norwegian yeast, Kvike yeast, which ferments at super high temperatures and thus ferments extremely fast. After the first beer was done, I saved some of the yeast from the fermenter and I used it to start the fermentation of the second beer. It's going in at about 73 degrees. About halfway through fermentation of the second batch, I had an idea. Um, I've made somewhat of a rash decision. No worries, I do this all the time. Hmm, here's the final plan. What about that plan? New plan. Ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. What I'm gonna do is top crop some yeast directly from an active fermentation into another fermentation here. I doubt it's, I doubt it's gonna be a bad idea. I, I bet it's gonna make, work out just fine. So we're looking for 13 pounds. Noticing that something smells up here. It's definitely me, I just got done with the run. Okay, um, the pH could have been just a tiny bit lower on that last one. I do have some of this acidulated malt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in here. I think this would be a good amount. Quickly adjust my water chemistry here. You know the biggest bummer about making videos like brewing beer on camera is that I can't listen to music while I'm doing this, which I would love to do. Cause it just wouldn't work for us. We'd have to, well, first of all, copyright claims and then the music would all get cut up. Green basket in. This kind of close in terms of water level here. Pop a lid on this. Oh, you know what I want to do first is do this. Oh, you know what helps? Plugging in your pump. Oh, yeah. Pro tip. Plug your pump in. What the bloody hell? Oh, that was element. Well, it wouldn't have worked anyway. Okay, there we go. Turn my element back on. Get this circulating here. Now I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then I will adjust the pH if needed. See you in 10 minutes. Sweet, 5.2 and a half. So, uh, perfect. Looking real good. And then that'll put me right at about 30 minutes to the mash. I like how uh, Marshall at Brewlosophy has, I think he's described it best in that. There are a lot of things in brewing that are just nice even round numbers. An hour mash, hour boil, and you have to wonder, you know, why were these numbers picked? They seem sort of arbitrary. If we can get away with shorter mashes, we're, I think I'd like to do it. I'm going to pull these grains out. Just go ahead and bump this temp up now. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna pop this guy out. Oh. All right, we got a boil going here. Need to get my hops in now. I'm gonna do one ounce of Equinot, 15% alpha acid. Basket in, one ounce of Equinot in, and going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Once this timer goes off, I'll be done with the boil. Okay, I have about five minutes left in the boil here. I need to get my hoses hooked up. 
Alrighty, timer's going off here. So, <clears throat> turning my heat off. Turn my cooling water on. And um, we're gonna cool this thing down to 95. All right, I have to keep an eye on this this time. I can't overshoot my temperature. At least I don't want to overshoot my temperature. Dang it, dang it. We, 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 we're not even close. <laughs> One last thing I need to do here, I'm um, doing flame out addition. I'm gonna use the rest of my Equinot hops. This is about an ounce. And then I'm gonna use Medusa hops. Yeah, this is only like 3.8% alpha acid. So the Equinot was 15. We're gonna do a little um, like aeration, essentially. Got a quarter bucket of star sand here. Dunk it in my star sand here. So I'm just, I've got the cooling water turned off. I'm going to turn the pump back on. All right. I'm gonna run this into the hot basket. My hope here is that it's going to aerate the work because I'm not removing this and shaking it up in a bucket and whatnot. I'm relying on the spray valve to aerate, which I'm sure it will, but I've got this one set to 98.6 degrees. I'm gonna leave this hop stand sit a little bit longer here. I added the hops to flame out. It maybe took like 10 minutes to cool it down. Um, and I'm gonna leave it sit for maybe another 10 minutes while it aerates, and then we'll get to the magic crazy part. Top cropping. As soon as fermentation starts, there's gonna be some proteins and some hop debris on top. You're gonna to wanna to scoop this off. The trick to top cropping is catching your donor beer at peak fermentation, also known as high croissant. At this point, there will be a billowy head of healthy yeast on top of your fermenter. To top crop, all you have to do is take a sanitized spoon and scoop yeast from the croissant into your fresh batch of wort. We found a source that said you would probably want to use 50 to 100 milliliters of yeast. I'm just going to take several spoonfuls. You want to crop just enough yeast to get your new batch going without taking away too much from your donor beer. What are the benefits of top cropping? By doing this, you're only harvesting viable yeast that's healthy and clean. Not the dirty, dead yeast from the bottom of a fermenter that's mixed in with the leftover tube and sediment. Both of these harvesting methods work, but top cropping is the fastest method that still yields a good result. Check out our yeast harvesting video to learn how to harvest and wash yeast from the bottom of a fermenter. I'm gonna mix that up in there. And I'm not too worried about oxidation of this existing beer because like I said, it's like only 50% done. I probably really haven't exposed this uh, guy to any more oxygen than it would have received if I would have dry hopped it. I'm gonna put these clips back on. And uh, I've got just the hose running out of the top of the kettle here into a pot full of star sand same hose running in here. Temperature is set to 98.6 degrees. One last thing, this is the batch three starting gravity. With temperature correction, the sky is actually about 1047. So still a little bit lower than I was wanting, but what are you gonna do? It's just, it's gonna be beer at the end of the day and it's gonna be drinkable. And if you drink enough, it'll uh, do the job. So we'll come back and check it out tomorrow. Beer's a... Uh... Yeast, yeast is a mystical beast. All right, it's eight o'clock at night on Sunday. I wrapped up this brew day yesterday, I think around five o'clock or something like that. This thing's been fermenting for uh, just over 24 hours and we are down to 10, 11. This guy is done. The thing I love about this Norwegian Voss yeast is that it ferments insanely fast. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this guy in our big kegerator, the big kegerator we use for the taps. We have like no beer right now. So I'm gonna pop it in there. Whew, man, it's heavy. And this thing should be cooled down and ready to keg and quick carb tomorrow. It's gonna be real nice. All right, here we go, three day IPA. No, see here. What is this, this, this one's called what, top crop? Disclaimer here, I guess. It's beyond its prime because of our office move. We waited way too long to taste this. We're actually in the process of remodeling our new brewing studio right now. We finished one wall, but we're still working on the rest of it. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see how it turns out. You're not going to want to miss it.
despite the fact that this beer, again, is well past its prime, it tastes really good. We use Equinot hops, um, which should have like a lemon, lime, orangey taste, and um, some of the Norwegian yeast, Sigmund's Voss and Hornendal. Uh, Sigmund's Voss definitely has an orange taste, and that's all coming through. So believe it or not, it's still pretty decent beer considering the age. And believe it or not, this beer was by far the best of the three beers I brewed in the three-day IPA series. There was some kind of magic that happened uh, during the top cropping process. I don't know what that is. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, uh, but I would definitely try that again. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and tell your mom.